Hey guys. Um, yeah, this is my first video in a little while. It's a good feeling to make more videos, but um, yeah, I just want to share what's going on a little bit with you. Um, this is a video update in my series of video updates of my life, <laughs> the things that are going on. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Well, I'm on my way home and I'm getting ready to go take a nap. I think I'm planning to at least, and um, I had a really good, awesome experience. Had a lot of good, awesome experiences lately, but I had one specifically that was really cool. Um, I matched with somebody on the dating app that I'm using, and they messaged me. And not only did they message me, but they were like, "Hey, we should do this, 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 and this, and this, and this," but in a nice way, not really like that way, but basically like. Um, hey, you know, um, yeah, I'm not going to share too many details because it's special, but anyway, um, it was a really great, it was a great thing and it's been, and, uh, our interactions have been good and, um, we spoke over the phone and had a nice scripture study, which was really, really awesome. And that was amazing. And I really love that. And um, I'm really... I'm really thankful for that. And I'm really looking forward... To the future... I'm like, I'm excited because I think that things are going in a really good direction. And I hope they keep going in a good direction. And um, even if they don't, I'm, I'm thankful for what has happened. I'm thankful. And uh, I know that God has a plan for me. I know that he has a special someone for me, whether it's this person or not. And uh, I'm just really excited about that. This is something I feel with my heart, my whole heart. I feel it, basically. You know what I mean? Feel it with my heart. And it's really special, so... Yeah. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I'm in communication with this person. And uh, it's really, really exciting. I'm just trying to take it slow. That's the message I get from everybody. And um, I get excited because every time she texts me, I'm like, Yay! She texted me! Woo! And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'll respond. Yeah, of course, I'll, I'll respond. But, um, yeah, the other thing that I was thinking, too, was, like, um, this is an interesting topic, thought piece here. So, this concept has been present in my life lately. And it is the, the concept that should not bend over backwards for people who are not willing to do the same for you. You know what I mean? In that, you know, okay. Let's just say you have a friend, and I've had these friends, and I've had different situations, all kinds of situations lately, different interpersonal relationship things going on lately, which is really good because it's clearing the road. It's helping flush out a lot of unhealthy things. But say you have a friend who is never there when you call them. They don't answer their phone. They don't text you back. They... You send them something, they never respond. Um, should you respond to them as soon as they write you back? It's a good question, right? So when they do finally write you back, should you go, oh my gosh, I'm going to write them back? Or should you be like, I don't need to prioritize it that much because they've shown me their actions. You know what I'm saying? And I also have a dialogue going on, an ongoing dialogue with someone right now about karma, which is pretty interesting. And it's so, I think it's so tempting and easy to assume the role of the, assume the role of the dispenser of karma in that, like, say, like, there's a scenario someone shared on Facebook. That's what sparked this whole conversation. It was about this lady who went through the drive-thru 
and the lady behind her was yelling at her and honking her horn because she was taking too long to order. So the lady did something to get revenge on her. And the whole story was like, well, that's just karma. And it was a long story and it's just details, but like the lady went out of her way to do something, kind of a bait and switch, bait, hook and switch, and um, tricked the lady behind her and got back at her for basically treating her the way she did. And um, I think we def well, we definitely get, we definitely get tempted to behave that way in situations. We get tempted to behave, we get tempted to be the arbiter of, of justice to people sometimes. And I don't think it's our job. I don't think it's our job. I think we're supposed to be nice and that's it. But with that said, I think it's not just about being nice. I think it's about establishing and, maintain, and maintain, maintaining firm boundaries for your own well-being because you should love yourself too, right? You can't just love everybody else and that's it. You have to love yourself too. You gotta take care of yourself. And part of taking care of yourself is building boundaries and maintaining boundaries. And that's hard work, but I've had to do that with some friends recently, lay down the law and that sort of thing. And choosing to respond, choosing not to respond, choosing to engage, choosing to not engage, choosing to ignore. And that is okay. I want to encourage you, encourage myself at the same time, that if that's what you think you need to do, I encourage you to do it. And let the chips fall where they may. Because sometimes you need to do what you need to do. You know what I mean? Sometimes you need to do what's healthy for you. And it's not healthy to keep engaging with someone who is um, toxic, dare I say. Or someone who is, um, let's just call it unhealthy. You know what I mean? Um, and I don't mean to take this and run with it. If you have a pretty uneventful life, I'm not trying to give you reasons to make enemies, but I am saying that um, you got to be careful about your time and how you spend it, and I guess the way that I got here was thinking about this whole, the concept of me and this uh, person that I'm talking to, because they are um, busy, they work a lot, and um, I think I figure out the answer, so the answer is follow the spirit, you'll know what to do. And so with this person, I'm really, really excited to talk to them. And obviously, they can't text me all the time. They've told me that, and they've explained that to me. And I understand that, and I'm not unhappy about that. I just accept the reality. And it's like, um, it's like a dog waiting for their master to get home. You get really excited, right? It's like you're a kid and your dad's coming home from work and you can't wait to see your dad. Um, you get really excited and you look forward to it and you get really excited, right? And I think that part of part of wisdom is to think about that and be careful about that and to break it down and say, you know what, I need to not hinge so much of my happiness on whether this thing happens or not because that can be definitely unhealthy, right? So that's where, you have, that's where I think I need to do. I need to keep myself in check a little bit better about how happy I get about certain things. And I need to ground myself a little bit more. Yeah, for sure. And, um, yeah, it's something I was thinking about. But, yeah, it's like, well, I'm willing to text this person back right away. Basically. I mean, I mean, I do, you know what, when I'm busy or something, I, I do it when it's convenient. I do it when it's convenient. Um, I don't go out of my way. And, I mean, this is just, this is just, con this is just conversation. This is not, like, life and death. This is not, like... You know what I mean? This isn't like serious, serious, serious. But it's like, at the same time, this person is very busy. And the little time that they do have to message me, they take the time to message me. And they apologize for what happened. Why they weren't able to message me. And I try to reassure them that it's okay. You know, you don't have to break your back to get back to me. You know what I mean? Because um, I get it, you're busy. And in other words, I see the, char the character, I see the quality of them. I see the, I see the quality of their character coming through. I see what they're willing to put into this relationship. Um, 
and I mean relationship, like any kind of relationship between friends, brothers, sisters, fathers, mothers, anything, daughters, mothers, whatever, anyone. And um, I have one person in my life I won't name, but they, um, they don't really respond very often to me. We kind of had a moment where we were in communication pretty good, and then it kind of fell away again. And that kind of thing sucks because when that happens, um, you get frustrated because you get your hopes up. And I had a good communication relationship with this person in the past. We communicate a lot and often. And I guess it became a little unhealthy because I would say something and then they wouldn't respond. And then they would feel guilty for not responding and they feel bad for not responding. But instead of instead of communicating they shut down and they walled themselves off and then they completely destroyed their relationship with their phone which I respect everybody has that agency to choose to do that or not but um, long story short this person is someone I can't really get a hold of when I need to pretty much and very, very hit or miss. Very, very, very miss, 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 hit, miss, 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 hit, miss, 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 hit. And when they respond to me, when they send something to me, they're like super laid back and chill and calm, like everything's great. Well, everything is great in their world, but everything's not necessarily great in my world. So should I break my back to respond to them when they aren't ever really willing to put the effort in or put the effort forth to respond to me I don't think so and I also don't think that I need to be sending things to them with unhealthy hopes that they will respond to me because people just if people people show you things and once you see patterns and you start to see trends then you can you can come to you can then you can draw conclusions from that you can make estimated guesses you can you can say clearly this person is most likely not going to write me back so why am I wasting my time sending them stuff that they will never probably read watch listen to or respond to right and so part of that falls on me to kind of figure that out and the other part is the mourning and the grieving the sadness of the relationship that was because we did have a really good relationship um and it's not that our relationship as a whole is gone. It's just that the commu- our communication relationship is pretty much gone. And, I mean, part of that might be me realizing that the person needs more space than I'm giving them. But the other side of it is I give them a lot of space. Like, a lot, a lot, a lot of space. And if you want me to text you once a year, that seems to be how much space they want. And the part that's hard is I don't see that person very much. And they're really close to me and my family. And if I want any relationship with them at all, I feel like it has to be through communication. But it doesn't seem like communication is something that they want to have. They don't want any part of it. They're not interested. And so that part's really hard because... It's sad because I love this person. I know they love me and I want to communicate with them. And they um, don't want to communicate with me. They're not interested. And that's hard. That's hard to take. But um, I think that the more important, I think that what you have to do in that situation is you have to do what is, um, you have to do what's healthy for yourself. And if that's not responding, if that's not sending, then don't send, don't respond. And I think that's what I'm going to do, you know. And um, that's kind of where I'm going. That's the direction I'm going in. And it takes discipline. It takes mental discipline. But I'm definitely going to do those things. So thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate you. Have a great day.